Canto 11, Circle 6, The Heretics We came to the edge of an enormous sink rimmed by a circle of great broken boulders. Here we found ghastlier gangs, and here the stink thrown up by the abyss so overpowered us that we drew back, cowering behind the wall of one of the great tombs, and standing thus, I saw an inscription in the stone and read, I guard Anastasius, once Pope, he whom Pontius led from the straight road. Before we travel on to that pit, we must delay until our senses grow used to its foul breath, and then we will not mind it, my master said. And I, then, let us find some compensation for the time of waiting. And he, you shall see, I have just that in mind, my son, he began. There are below this wall three smaller circles, each in its degree, like those you are about to leave, and all are crammed with gods accursed. Accordingly, that you may understand their sins at sight, I will explain how each is prisoned and why. Malice is the sin most hated by God, and the aim of malice is to injure others, whether by fraud or violence. But since fraud is the vice of which man alone is capable, God loathes it most. Therefore, the fraudulent are placed below, and their torment is more painful. The first below are the violent. But as violent sins in three persons, so is that circle formed of three descending rounds of crueler torments. Against God, self, and neighbor is violence shown. Against their persons and their goods, I say, as you shall hear set forth with open reason. Murder and mayhem are the violation of the person of one's neighbor and of his goods, harassment, plunder, arson, and extortion. Therefore, homicides and those who strike in malice, destroyers and plunderers, all lie in that first round, and like sufferers with like. A man may lay violent hands upon his own person and substance, so in that second round, eternally, in vain, repentance moan the suicides and all who gamble away and waste the good and substance of their lives and weep in that sweet time when they should be gay. Violence may be offered the deity in the heart that blasphemes and refuses him and scorns the gifts of nature, her beauty and bounty. Therefore, the smallest round brands with his mark both Sodom and Chaos, and all who rail at God in his commands in their hearts dark. Fraud, which is a canker to every conscience, may be practiced by a man on those who trust him and on those who have responded no confidence. The latter mode seems only to deny the bond of love which all men have from nature. Therefore, Within the second circle lie simoniacs, sycophants, and hypocrites, falsifiers, thieves, and sorcerers, grafters, pimps, and all such filthy cheats. The former mode of fraud not only denies the bond of nature, but the special trust added by bonds of friendship or blood ties. Hence, at the center point of all creation, in the smallest circle on which this is found, the traitors lie in endless expiation. Master, I said, the clarity of your mind impresses all you touch. I see quite clearly the orders of this dark pit of the blind. But tell me, those who lie in the swamp's bowels, those the wind blows about, those the rain beats, and those who meet and clash with such mad howls, why are they not punished in the rust-red city if God's wrath be upon them? And if it is not, why, if it is not, why must they grieve through all eternity? And he, why does your understanding stray so far from its own habit? Or can it be your thoughts are turned along some other way? Have you forgotten that your ethics state the three main dispositions of the soul that lead to those offenses heaven hates, incontinence, malice, and bestiality? And how incontinence offends God least and earns least blame from justice and charity? Now, 
If you weigh this doctrine and recall exactly who they are, whose punishment lives or lies in that upper hell outside the wall, you will understand at once why they are confined apart from these fierce wraiths and why less anger beats down on them from the eternal mind. O son, which clears all mist from troubled sight, such joy attends your rising that I feel as grateful to the dark as to the light. Go back a little further, I said, to where you spoke of usury as an offense against God's goodness. How is that made clear? Philosophy makes plain, by many reasons, he answered to me, to those who heed her teachings, how all of nature, her laws, her fruits, her seasons, spring from the ultimate intellect and its art. And if you read your physics with due care, you will note, not many pages from the start, that art strives after her by imitation, as the disciple imitates the master. Art, as it were, is the grandchild of creation. By this, recalling the Old Testament near the beginning of Genesis, you will see that in the will of providence, man was meant to labor and prosper. But usurers, by seeking their increase in other ways, scorn nature and herself and her followers. But come, for it is my wish now to go on. The wheel turns and the wane lies over Karas. The fish are quivering low on the horizon. And there, beyond us, runs the road we go down the dark scarp into the depths below. <laughs>